Hello everyone, it's Hannesus, and welcome to another Legends of Runeterra video. Sorry, I'm at a different angle than normal. I have my two monitors set up and my laptop, which I normally put the camera on, is the, uh, the recording thing's bugging out on it for some reason. So I put the camera on my secondary monitor. So you're seeing me at a slightly different angle. Hi, isn't this cool? Um, so we're doing something a little bit different today. If you can't tell from the, the screen in front of you already. So one of my subscribers um, sent me some of his videos, some of his games, because he wants he's like a new player. He's only been playing for, uh, I think, a few weeks now. Um, and he wanted me to like look over some of his games and tell him what he's doing right, doing wrong, stuff like that, to, so like giving him some critiques. So I agreed to do it, and um, he has a few. Hopefully I can go through a few of them. And uh, uh, Parodini, if you're watching, you know, um, Hope you uh, learn a thing or two. Um, and additionally, for those of you who do not speak Portuguese, uh, Peridoni does. He speaks Portuguese, so that all of this videos, all of them will be in Portuguese. I will try my best to tell you what's going on in the video so you don't have to like try and guess as things are happening. Um, but kind of keep that in mind as going through it reading. If you are, like me, one of the many people who don't speak Portuguese, um, it reading probably will not help you out here. So we're getting into it. This, this is game number one. I apologize if on the screen you see something different that there was for the intro of this video. I realized halfway through recording that I was actually covering up important bits of the video. So I'm re-recording things and so there might be a little awkward in between moments uh, when things when like the intro doesn't quite line up. But anyway, we are getting into uh, game one. And this is uh, Peridoni. Um, he is using a spider deck. Spider deck. And let's see, he is bronze three right now. I think um, in a couple of the other videos he is bronze four, so I may play these a little bit out of order. Um, but regardless, we are going to try our best to talk about the different plays that are going on in the video and try and not be harsh in our critiques, but be constructive. So he is against a Hecarim deck, a Hecarim Callista deck that is using Piltover as a second region. I'm very curious as to what they're trying to do with it. But um, Peridoni is in bronze, so it could just be a lower region, like a, a bronze kind of, they don't have all the cards because they don't want to pay money or they don't play enough to have all the dust. So could be that there. I also, if I didn't say it in my intro, um, everything is in Portuguese. So if you don't speak Portuguese, you won't be able to read what's going on, um, but I will narrate as best I can. So the opponent is basically just drawing cards here, which leaves uh, our good friend to be able to attack with seven damage to the face, which is fantastic. Love to see it. All right, so the opponent summoned a shark chariot. Excuse me, summoned a shark chariot. So Shark Chariot, it is a 3-1. It can't block, which is fantastic. Developing the reaction core is absolutely the right thing to do here. Just develop your board as big as possible. Okay, so they're not even going to attack with the Shark Chariot. They're instead going to use it for fodder for the Butcher. I guess the opponent isn't going to attack here because that leaves them open. Okay, yep, not attacking. Don't want to be open to an open attack. So um, Parrot only has this stun card in his hand, which gives everything plus 2, plus 2, and can stun a unit. Now that works really good with overwhelm units and when you have a full board. So he doesn't have a full board right now. He could push, if he uses this mid combat, he could push for a couple extra damage. I don't agree with this here because this pushes, um, the opponent, yeah, the opponent can still block, right? So he just, he like phantom blocks. So he's pushing four damage with this spider Does this spell not go off if the unit dies? I think the attack still goes off, right? I'm actually not sure. Okay, it does. But anyway, um, he's pushing nine damage here. So a lot of damage, mind you. But I think it might have been better if he just developed his board state and then something dies and then he could do a full round of spiders going into a full board full of spiders. Could then have used the arachnid the following turn. The rack from the following turn could have gave everything plus bonuses, and then you can finish off with that that big ol' give everything plus two attack and stun an opponent. So, 
Uh, I think it got a little too antsy with the just getting some nice damage in there. Um, I would have tried. Uh, I'm more inclined to use cards like that as finishers. And here, the five cross spider isn't bad. Um, it gives a little bit of extra damage. The yeah, opponent gets a. So these shouldn't be blocked at all. This is a lot of damage. That, but this doesn't need to be blocked. They're all ephemeral. They will die after being hit. It's not Ionia. So, yeah. All of these should not be blocked. Should soak the 11 damage. And then should be able to go for an open attack win the following turn. Because the opponent has very little to block. So none of these should be blocked. Being that the opponent has... The, the regions that the opponent has, like... And honestly, if you're going to block at all, you might as well block the Lifesteal unit. Um, because, I mean, the Lifesteal unit is going to do the most damage regardless. It has the most attack. And it gets its Lifesteal off regardless. So, uh, I, I think a little bit of a, of a misplay there. Because now, uh, Paradonia has to develop his board in order to get the lethal. And developing the board, likewise, gives your opponent's time to do so. Okay, he can do that for lethal as well. But if the opponent has any kind of removal card, this just isn't lethal. Um, it's playing Piltover, so I would always be wary of Mystic Shot. But that does not seem to be the case. Okay. And he got game. So, he did win. And I want to point out that, like, I didn't... I, I wasn't saying that like, he couldn't get lethal there. I was saying that... He could get lethal, but he leaves himself in a much more open position to have his lethal stopped, right? He has two units, the opponent is running Piltover, and has nine mana, um, even with other um, other cards in Shadow Isles and nine mana. There's still a lot of things that the opponent could have done, like that could have had to not die. And it, it's, it's more so just playing around the possibilities of what your opponent could have that I'm referring to. But overall, not bad. I will say, not not a bad game. All right, we are going to go back. Um, so this is a game when he is bronze four. Again, apologize for doing these out of order. This is just what I had queued up. Skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so he is against a Karma Victor deck. Okay, so we see here. Yep, great mulligan. There's some argument to be said for keeping the Trefari in. But I, I mean, I could lean either way, honestly. Definitely should play one drop. It's fantastic. This one drop might get killed by like a Thermo Beam or a Victor's Laser. All right. Real talk. No one plays Victor's Laser in like Platinum and Up. Maybe golden up. I'm not, I don't know that as much, but in like platinum and up, no one plays Victor's laser. So, <laughs> whenever I'm going through this, I never expect Victor's laser to come out. Um, I'm always expecting like thermo beam, right? And for the most part, it's like, do you want to use a thermo beam on a one mana thing? For the most part, no. So it will live. But I don't think about Victor's laser. Anyway, moving on. At least sounds so cool in Portuguese. Ah, that sounds so much better than she does in English. Ah. Anyway. Easy, easiest attack with Elise. It's a free two damage. Free. And our buddy is capitalizing on that free damage. So right here... I'm not a huge fan of Frenzied Skitterer. So Frenzied Skitterer could be used here, and I, I think the, the reason why you might go with Frenzied Skitterer is solely to try and build Elise's level up. You go with the Skitterer this turn, you hit a Skitterer next turn, you can possibly level up Elise. It is one method to go about it. Second thing would be, all right, let's develop the Legion Saboteur. And in developing the Legion Saboteur, we can then try and push for a little more damage. Ah. 
And based on um, the aggro game plan that this deck's going for, I think I would have liked to see the Legion Saboteur out, just to push for a little more. Yeah, this is great Frenzy Scudderer. And now, at this point, I think Peridoni should just stop. Just don't attack, let it go through, because now you level up Elise, and a leveled up Elise is super good. Like, giving all your spiders here some and giving them all challenger is crazy crazy good so i i wouldn't even attack here i would just let this go you are missing out on potential damage but you know what i think it's worth it i think it's absolutely worth it just let this go level up elise is terrifying with the spider deck and i see him contemplating the lisker wrath here i don't like this pre um pre-done elixir because this basically, like, it gives your opponent, okay, I need to block this thing because it has a lot of attack, right? Whereas if you keep it in your hand, after they declare the block... So, okay, this, this could be something that he just doesn't... Not fully realizing how burst speed spells work, right? Um, so, for those of you watching this... Here, let me, let me rewind it a second. So you can see... So, burst speed spells, right? So we have... Um, so you can see this card has, like, this little symbol here. So this is a burst speed spell. That means it can be played. Well, it, it this fact happens instantly. Um, when played, and it can be played after the opponent takes an action. So, if, and in the middle of combat. So, if he's declaring attack, once he declares an attack, the opponent then has to declare blockers. I mean, the opponent, I guess, doesn't have to, but it'd be a terrible idea for him not to block this. So you can you can assume that the opponent will block something to not get really really hurt. So if we're assuming that, then it's less worth it to Elixir now, as opposed to waiting until the opponent, you see where the opponent's blocking, and then you can Elixir for max damage. Because as we will see, this Elixir gets put on the little spider, which is a 5-1, but Elise is the prime target, so the 3-3 is definitely going to block Elise. And the 2-1 has to block this spider, or you can block this spider, but he blocked this one gives more damage because these two have fearsome, so he can't block these. So if he's already going to block this because it's the most damage he can block, it'd be much more worth it to throw the Elixir of Wrath on one of these two spiders where you can guarantee that the damage will go through. And doing that, if you want to go with the preemptive route for Elixir of Wrath, putting the Elixir on one of these two spiders then makes the opponent second guess and goes, oh, maybe I should use my Ballistic Bot and block one of these spiders because that's blocking more damage and has the potential to leave Elise alive. In the most part, I don't think that'll happen because most people probably see, okay, Elise is important and you get rid of her. And if that's the case, then you just get that extra three damage. So this seven damage could have been turned into 10. Skip ahead a little bit. The opponent plays Victor. It only plays an Arachnid Horror. Uh, so Victor is getting keywords, so right now he is a boy with quick attack. Quick attack boy. So Victor, uh, Peridoni played the Frenzy Skitterer, and Victor is attacking the quick attack. On this point, you, you don't block. You don't need to. You're taking 3 damage. You have 18 health still. The opponent isn't playing a bursty deck. It, Honestly, doesn't matter to block. And especially not blocking with the Skitterer. That's so much damage that you're losing out on. Um, an important thing to note is that, in general, you don't... Like, there's a, there's two unit keywords that, in general, you don't want to block. It's Quick Attack and Overwhelm. Overwhelm, because if they get rid of any of your units, they're going for a full, full hit. And Quick Attack, because they trade favorably like that, and you don't get any damage on their unit. You get nothing beneficial out of it besides just saving a little bit of health. The health there wasn't important, so trading wasn't important either. And the opponent is throwing out a lot of things right now. Buffing Victor, blowing up a spider, blowing up a spider. So the opponent, I think, is banking on the Victor getting lifesteal from the Augment. If Victor got lifesteal off the Augment, that would be suck so much. Nope. Alright. Now it's just play Legion Saboteur and then go for the win. 
Uh, the opponent is out of mana. Uh, Precious Pet is one less damage, so that will take the more damage. And actually, you need that one damage because your opponent is exactly 10 health. He's going to block the 5 attack unit because the largest one. And then he takes damage. So, I think the, the important takeaway... Yeah, and Peridoni wins. So, the important takeaway from this is to... Um, one, burst speed spells. Use them reactively in combat instead of proactively. And Elise's level up is huge. And being able to confidently hit that level up will give, give you a lot of gains uh, later in the game. We'll go on to a third game. Um, we'll go a little quicker through this one. So uh, he's against a Braum, a Braum Vladimir deck. So the deck's all about damaging itself. And so we see a good early game start from his hand. The opponent plays a unit that... Uh, gets more damage it gets attack when it's damaged when it survives damage fearsome it has zero attack it can't block the fearsome doing great so here the imperial is damaging the opponent's own unit so it gets more attack and i think the frenzy skitterer is the right play here um or not the frenzy skitterer don't have that the arachnid horror i think is the right play uh, just because it's effective mana usage that's all. It doesn't matter that much if you really want to bank the one mana, but it's, you know, it's minor things. Now Arachnid Horror here, fine. It's the best play you can make. Okay, a second zero three. A full attack here seems fine. Um, two Precious Pets and Arachnid Horror all have Fearsome. Block the Arachnid Horror with a three two. Two Precious Pets go and you get four damage. And you trade up. So, or you trade even. Oh, down a little bit, because it is technically a one-mana unit. But, yeah, it's fine. Don't need to Elixir here. It is pushing extra three damage, but it is unnecessary. Um, I think you could have saved Elixir again. Uh, I'm a fan of saving Elixir and things like that for situations where they present themselves where it's super beneficial or you just win. Definitely summoning spiders here. Good idea. Fast forward a little bit. Alright, the opponent has summoned another unit that... Um, ooh, what's going on here? Sorry, the opponent summoned another unit that it gets additional attack when it gets damaged. So Peridoni has Vile Feast. And he is using Vile Feast on a tough unit. I, I see why he didn't use it on the 0-3 or the 2-4, right? He obviously doesn't want to give them the bonus attack. But using it on the tough unit, um, it's... A little bit of a weird interaction because this is a drain effect and so you don't get any more hp because you didn't hit you didn't do any damage because tough negates a damage um so when using cards like vile feast it's important to take a note that they have multiple effects and you want to try to get the most value out of your spell that you can right here he's getting additional spider which is some value but he is lacking a lot of that value in terms of Okay, well, I don't get any healing and don't do any damage to an opponent's minions. So it's... Uh, and he has the two mana, right? So he can also bank that two spell mana. And with his hand right now, you know, considering... Depending what he draws, but this Vile Feast is two mana. This is one mana. This is five mana. So next turn, he'll be able to play his entire hand anyway. Um, so I think this is kind of pulling the trigger too early. And um, being a little too gung ho with using using spells when it's not entirely needed. So the precious pet, pet, precious pet, precious pet is definitely the one to block with here. It just, it just trades, take a little bit of damage, but traded. Um, I can see this here. I think if you didn't. Vile Feast, he wouldn't have to get rid of a spider next turn, because now he's a board of six spiders. So, he basically lost that spider, they summoned a Vile Feast anyway, so it didn't even matter, which is kind of sad. And see here, again, it would have been, this would have been a much better spot for Vile Feast. So, the opponent has a 5-8. If our buddy attacks here, the 5-8 will most likely block the 5-3. This 2-4 will block a 3-1. Now, if the 2-4 blocks a 3-1, he then could have killed it with Vile Feast because you can use Vile Feast in combat. And then he wouldn't have to deal with this, this big unit. 
so then he would have had three spiders alive, and the opponent would only have one unit instead of two. And as we see, the opponent then attacks. Uh, so this block here isn't ideal just based off of uh, wind conditions that Parrot only has. So one of these definitely needs to be blocked because it's representing lethal. So something has to be blocked. But throwing two spiders in there um, puts you at a deficit in units. And you only have so few units that you can summon based on how many cards you have. Your opponent has a much bigger hand. So it's assumed that your opponent can get out, say, two units. If you block like this, then he has two, gets out another two, and he has four. And that fully blocks everything in your hand, and lethal pretty much escapes you. Um, I don't blame him for losing to double might. Double might's whack. Anyone who has double might, that's kind of hard to see coming. So, But yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for that match is uh, saving Vile Feast and using spells when a better opportunity presents itself. Okay, so we're on the last game. So it is, let's 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 rewind that so we can see what the matchup is. Whoop. Um, so we got him, obviously, with his least spider deck against a Karma Aphelios. So this is going to be a much slower deck he's facing. And it's going to be very important to go early and strong and, and really get a lot of early pressure down. So as we see here, he has Arachnid Horror. Great. Uh, Precious Pet. I'm assuming, actually, I rewind a little too fast. Okay, so he didn't have Precious Pet in his opening hand. He Okay, he drew Precious Pet on turn two. So Arachnid Horror on turn two. Great. And then into a Trefarian. So this Trefarian here, instead of going into a Trefarian, this represents five damage. But there is the potential to go Precious Pet into Trefarian Hopeful. And this would represent 7 damage, as we saw in that earlier game. So this is a 7 damage combo, and this is only 5 damage for the same mana. Um, Targon Ionia has a very hard time taking care of a wide board state. It's much better to um, go wide against this specific deck, as opposed to going with beefier, like healthier units. And so th this is just kind of like knowing the matchups better. And then also going for the most potential damage that you can, which would be the Trefarian Hopeful and the Spider in the Precious Bed. Opponent doesn't do anything, and he takes eight. So definitely at an advantage here. He's playing one card. He needs to play two spells to get the Dragonling out of this. Okay, not two spells are being played. No Dragonling. I'm sliding away. Star shaping. So I, the opponent should not use star shaping here. This against an aggressive deck, star shaping right now, without developing any more units, puts you at an awful position because now Peridoni is just free to say, okay, I'll develop my board as much as possible this turn. I'll throw in a Trefarian Hopeful. I'll throw in a Precious Pet, and that's and maybe maybe even like I can see an argument for Vile Feasting for that additional spider as well. Trefarian Hopeful, Precious Pet, Vile Feast for the additional spider. And you can attack with a five unit wide board and just put out a ton of damage. Absolute ton of damage. Um, I'm, I'm not as much of a fan as the Trefarian, uh, the Trefarian, whatever this Trefarian guy is here. I, I think that he could try to put out a little more damage and I think he could develop a little more into this attack. Yeah. So because he didn't develop, he did get punished by the opponent just having a way to answer. And this this brings me back to the previous game. The Vile Feast here isn't doing anything, right? The, the spider can't attack right now. It would just be used as maybe a chump blocker, but the damage doesn't matter in the unit and you're gaining no health from it. So Vile Feast, I believe, should just be saved until it can be used at a better time. And your board's very full right now. You most likely want to resummon the Trefarian, so then having a five-unit board limits how many things you can redevelop. So we'll skip ahead a little bit. The opponent still has nothing on the board. Okay, so the opponent stunned. Neat. 
Oh, the opponent hits a double stun. Interesting. Ooh, and two claws of the drag. This is like an old school Ionia um, Targon deck before all the weird nonsense that like Zoe and Aphelios came out. <laughs> claws of the dragon. Um, but right now, I would probably just pass. Uh, your health doesn't matter that much because it is a resource. You are the aggressive deck. Your health does not matter as much as your opponent's. You can trade one of the pressure pets into something. I think that's fine. That, however, is unnecessary to trade that one drop spider. Um, because it doesn't trade favorably. You're just saving a little bit of health. I think it would be better just to save the one drop spider. And then you could frenzy skitter her next turn. Because using doing this, um, you're going to destroy a spider anyway. Because you want a frenzy skitter her. So one of the spiders, because the weakest attack unit, is just going to get obliterated so you can skitter. So again, this is kind of like wasting a, wasting a spider. Um, so that's an important note for this game, I would say, is uh, maximizing damage output and board space management. So now the opponent has a lot of things which can't block fearsome. So basically two free fearsome blocks or fearsome attackers here, which is very nice. Okay. Opponent has a 7-7. Seven, seven. I definitely attack with the two 5-5s five because they can't um, block. So they're used to blockers. Might as well get rid of units with them via attacking. I don't agree with as much as attacking the 5-2 because it will easily get traded into. Um, the 2-1 spider, though, is... Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with everything here except for attacking with the 5-2. Point heal of 1, which is kind of annoying. At this point, I think the the 2-mana spider um, would be great. It's just, it gives you obviously 2 spiders. You can Precious Pet to get a full board, or you can just wait and use your Brood Calling, whatever that card is called, um, in order to give everything plus one. Skip ahead a little bit. So the opponent used a Solari Priestess, got a card from Solari. So I really like the Elise here. Um, one thing that I would consider is what if the opponent got like a Challenger card, or this Solari Priestess can also get a card that is... Uh, Five mana, deal four damage to one unit and deal one da damage to another unit. So both of the five mana cards it can get, either way, will end up killing Elise. So I would put down the Precious Pet first to kind of like bait out whatever card it had, right? And then throw Elise down afterwards because Elise is more important. No, I'm mad at that. But that, again, I, I don't blame newer players for not knowing that, right? Like that comes playing against Solaria Priestess a ton, knowing exactly what every card in the game can do which takes a lot of time, and if you're a new player, you're not going to know those things. That's that's more so me because I played way too much of this game that I know what every card in the game does. So, moving on. Okay, I should say, I don't know what every card in the game does. I know what the popular meta cards do, and Slider Priestess is a popular meta card. So, I should rephrase that. I, not, I don't know every card in the game. Maybe Swim knows every card in the game, but like, no, no one knows actually every card, but higher tier players will know every card that's in the meta. And so this is a meta card, hence why I know it. Um, I, I don't think there's anything to do here, honestly. I don't... This is losing a lot of value. I think you wait for this... To build up your board after he attacks because that's three spiders which you lose that's that's a lot of value loss um i would only agree with that if you're going for like a lethal attack and you already have a full board of spiders otherwise it it doesn't really do much um and this would be an opportunity here that i would love to see that vile feast right so the opponent hooked a unit for attack, 
and he has no mana, meaning he can't save his unit if you were to Vile Feast it and be able to kill it that way. That being said, I'm very surprised the opponent left Elise alive. Could possibly be just because he saw the higher damage output and was like, I'll kill that one. And so now we're in a very awkward spot. Very, very awkward spot. I... I'm not a huge fan of this. It's This is too easy to block. I think that attack... The, the, the attacks leading up to this, I think, need to be a lot more optimized than they were. I think that sub-optimality gave the opponent a little too much time to react. See now... Um, what's the spell? Another Homecoming? Okay, so we have another Homecoming, so this blocks even more damage. Only actually get two damage through. Uh, it's really bad. The opponent still has a lot of board. The unit can still summon Dragonlings, which heal. We got a Felios, which can get healing cards. I, I, so at this point, seeing what the state of our hand is and seeing what the opponent has, I'd probably just surrender. Like, it's very, very unlikely that we can win from this state in the game, being that we are an aggro deck and our opponent has lifesteal and has a better board state than us right now. So it is turn nine. Generally by like turn seven is when this deck falls off, six to seven. Um, so at this point, I would just concede and take my time and go play another game. I wanna see Peridone plays for a little bit more. He's trying, but then a karma, an upgrade karma comes on the board and now, if it was in question before that you should concede, now you should definitely concede. There's absolutely no reason to keep playing this game. Um, upgrade Karma, Aphilios, a 7-1, Overwhelm, Constant Life Steal, absolutely no reason to play this game. So I think he plays a little bit more. Um, he gets one more attack in, but everything gets blocked. Yeah, killed up the 16 already. And I believe he does surrender soon. After being double Gravitumed, uh, he will surrender. So, that is, um, so if we're looking over advice from all the games, I would say for newer players, um, important things to keep in mind, obviously specific things like for Elise, you really want to work towards her level up because her level up can be huge and can be game winning. Um, that's a, like a specific example using this deck. Uh, more general things are keep in mind board spacing. Um, so you only have six slots. If you're playing an aggressive deck that summons a lot of units, you don't want to be wasting those slots and killing off your own units unnecessarily. Um, spells, uh, especially fast and burst speed spells, um, are very good. Actually, all spells, I would say, are very good to use in situations where you can get the maximum amount of value out of them. Uh, only getting part value out of the card, unless it's... Like, maybe using Vile Feast to try and push for one more damage with an extra spider, or having an extra spider's level up Elise, I can see that being done. Just using Vile Feast to get an extra spider for no reason, I, I'm not a fan of. You should really try to maximize your spells usage, because spells are very important tools and can really help turn games. Um, because it's your opponent might not always be expecting them, and even if they do, then they have to play around them, right? So it's it's that kind of mentality to it. Um, so so it's, that's what spells... Um, also, don't use burst speed spells before combat is started. Use it after your opponent declares block, so you can then figure out where you want to put your burst speed spell if you want to put it down at all. So that's spell usage. Um, and then the other one is being able to maximize your damage. So that's just, you see how much damage you have in hand, and you just, if you're playing an aggro deck, you just need to maximize how much you can put out, and then kind of aim for your win condition. And so aiming for the win condition is something that I will talk about a little bit more in a, a later video, but it basically comes down to knowing what deck you're playing, knowing what your deck your opponent's playing, and just getting, not I have like every card in your opponent's deck, but knowing that, okay, my deck is much faster than my opponent's, therefore I should be pushing for aggressive tempo, I should be pushing to finish this off before my opponent can gain steam. And for the most part, when you're playing an aggro spider deck, that's always going to be the case. The only time it's not going to be the case is when you're playing another aggro deck. Like maybe discard aggro might be faster than you. But for the most part, playing an aggro spider deck, you're always going to be, okay, I have to push as much damage as fast as possible. With the exception that leveling Elise takes priority in most situations. Because Elise's level up is too huge and you can get a giant board swing. 
Um, they will be able to chump block a lot of spiders without Elise's level up. So if you just push for straight damage, ignoring the least level up, then you have to keep in mind that, okay, I need to get as much value out of my spiders as possible, getting able to fill the board up as much as possible. So even if they chump block four of them, I still have two attacks going through. So that would be my general tips and advice. Uh, Perodini, thank you so much for sending me these clips. I really enjoyed looking through them and being able to talk to them. Um, so hopefully... Um, everyone who's watching who is a newer player uh, learned a thing or two from this and even if you're not a newer player hopefully you just enjoyed uh, so this is where I'll be ending the video anyone who wants to send me clips if you if you'd like to send me clips um, please reach out if I don't have your contact information already feel free I have a discord feel free to join that to give to in order to send me things feel free to just like say in the comments that you'd like to send me videos and I'll give you some links to things um, where you can message me directly and you can send me clips that you want me to review, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, in the near future, I'll also be doing like a mini deck building tutorial. So uh, keep an eye out for that. If you have trouble with deck building, you know, want to help some people with that with that too. So with all of that being said, sorry for rambling a little bit. Thank you everyone so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.